This is the Creative Outlet Podcast Episode 3. I am your host, Brandon Pudwill, and let's see, what is today the date that I am recording this? It is February 25th, 2020, uh, which is a Tuesday. Uh, Obviously, it's been quite a while since I recorded the uh, second episode, but you know what? I'm here. I'm ready to move on uh, to this third one, um, but you know it's 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 pretty much coming out how I expected it would be going in between episodes here. Uh, they would come out at the pace in which uh, I can make them because other assignments, of course, assignments that will be graded, whereas this obviously isn't an assignment for anyone other than me. Uh, this kind of has to take a back burner, but I am uh, working on this right now, right here, and I'm just gonna keep having things go as they are. Um, so what do I want to start by talking about? Well, why don't we, rather I, I just have a couple of reflections that I want to share from episode two. So, um... In particular, there's one segment that I wish I had done a little bit better on, which was the uh, game reproduction segment of the episode, which is that I should have clarified that I was focused on the uh, psychology of why you'd want to have a reproduction, or at least that's how I uh, should have introduced it. Obviously, that's kind of how I referred to it in other contexts, and a particular one that I'm going to be discussing here in this introduction. Um, And I was thinking about it because I was watching a segment from the completely unnecessary podcast, which is um, the show that I mentioned in that segment, and uh, I wish I knew the particular segment they did and the name of it so I could link to it. Um, but I just I was watching a segment about an illegal reproduction website. Um, you know, if I find that segment or if someone knows what that is, please uh, link it. But right now that exact one isn't coming to mind. And really, the thing that got me thinking about like, oh man, that's I should have referred to it a little bit differently. It's because of a segment that uh, the hosts uh, Pat and Ian mentioned in the segment, which is uh, counterfeit. And I do not and would not, in any circumstance, defend counterfeit products. But uh, the point of that episode, or that segment, is rather that I can see in a few specific scenarios, like with fans, fan-translated uh, cartridges, why one would want to purchase such a thing with the acknowledgement that it is illegal um, and that the reproduction cannot be resold. Now, that, that's only the that's really the main thing that I wanted to um, uh, reflect on from that first episode. Uh, let's see what other sorts of things are going on. Obviously, I talked about I have classes, and those are really uh, making problems in terms of uh, working on this. So let me just say, in like the last couple of weeks, I've I've translated. Well, I've read more translated Greek than I think I have in my entire life because I have, um, let's see, I read the Greek tragedy Medea um, by Euripides and a bunch of the books, which is just the fancy Greek way of saying chapters um, in uh, Plato's Republic. Um, And it's kind of frustrating because the thing is, so reading ancient translated Greek is not exactly something that I would call super enjoyable. Um, I'm sure there are some people who like it, but it's not really a thing for me. Um, But Medea really wasn't all that bad because the play was written pretty smoothly and as a reader it's like, oh, I I mean, I can understand obviously what's happening here with Medea being all um, angry that Jason is leaving her to marry a princess when they have children together. Uh, Whereas Republic is not really written in a uh, reader-friendly way. Uh, let's see, I also read The Prince by Machiavelli, Niccolo Machiavelli, I guess I should say. Um, it's a very interesting read, and it gives you quite a different perspective on who 
uh, Machiavelli was as a person, because you now we think of uh, Machiavelli and we think about um, him as like this ruthless, do whatever you can to get power sort of guy. And it's not like he doesn't talk about that at all in uh, the text. Uh, but he definitely gives quite a few more caveats on, hey, that you really shouldn't use violence. And here are some instances for, or some pretty common and logical instances for why you shouldn't. And I don't know, I guess I just, I don't think people really realize that uh, about him. And then recently I've been reading uh, Leviathan for uh, by Thomas Hobbes for my uh, political science class, which is a class that I read all uh, three Republic Machiavelli's uh, prints and uh, Leviathan for, whereas I'm taking an introduction to theater class. Uh, well, it's introduction to, introduction to theater and dramatic literature, so it counts as like a, a literature type credit. Uh, that's why I read Medea. Um, I also have read a couple more plays. I've read the ancient No play, Atsumori. Very interesting, very short, actually. Um, and uh, it definitely has a lot of symbolism that I thought. So it's funny, I th a lot of the people who are in the class with me actually didn't find it super clear, but I, I understood it pretty well. Uh, I thought it was very enjoyable. Um, and I've also read the classic French comedy Tartuffe. I also really enjoyed it, uh, even with all of the rhyming in it. I just think that the message in the play about... Uh, uh, religious hypocrisy and how many problems it can cause is a very interesting, unique, and important message. Even in the modern day, even like, you can just take out the religious part too and think about uh, hypocrisy and fakery, and I think that's very relevant to uh, 2020. Uh, and then what else has been going on? I've taken a couple of exams, um, examines de español, and... Uh, uh, so I have a genetics class for my uh, for a biological sciences credit. It's pretty interesting as well. I've taken an exam in there. Did pretty well. Um, I mean that's how the everyday life here has been going. Uh, let's see. I've also been thinking about doing some things with this show. So obviously, if you have been paying attention to what I've been doing here. Um, I started uploading segments from episode two, and uh, at the time of this recording, there should be uh, two more that are going up, two more that are uh, scheduled to upload at a particular time, um, and it's really interesting. I actually found editing those significantly easier than editing the full supercut of this show, um, but obviously in order to make it... <laughs> all of these segments, I need to have the supercut complete because I record the whole show in one big, one giant fell swoop. Um, uh, those have been going up. I've been seeing, I mean, you know, I'm quite at the start of this, I have fewer than uh, 50 views on everything that I've put up, but you know, uh, things are going pretty well on those, actually, in my opinion, in terms of just being able to produce them and make them at all. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've also been trying to think about other platforms in which I can uh, upload this show, particularly the audio portion, because obviously this is a podcast. So I've been trying to look into other platforms. I haven't really chosen any yet. Um, again, graded assignments and studying uh, we'll take precedence over working on things with this uh, show, but those are all things that are on my brain right now, and um, also looking into the future uh, in terms of episodes and their creation. I, I've already picked the topics for episode four, um, but I actually need to write out notes on things that I want to say about them in order to make... <laughs> having them picked out actually be relatively um, effective. Um, but I think that's all I really want to say in this introduction here. So why don't we move on to talking about some of the topics of the day. Mm -hmm. 